Jeremy, we're live. Hello once again. What's going on? How are you doing? Oh boy, you know, it's been it's a hectic week. End of the quarter. It's always always scrambling to get those deliverables in. Gotta hit those OKRs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's been similar. Uh, we have that thing coming up, which I can't necessarily say or not say right now, but that's coming up. That's been taking up a lot of my time producing for a new uh, upcoming project that we are participating in this year. So focusing on that, not playing as many video games as I want. So I treasure this time because I actually get to play and don't feel guilty about it. Yeah. What better use of your work time is there than playing games? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think you're wrong. Jeremy, what are you playing nowadays? Oh, I just finished Horizon Forbidden West last week. Uh, it was excellent. I liked it a lot. I hear like there's a lot of criticisms that it's like very similar to other like open world pseudo action RPG games. And I haven't played most of those, so I liked it anyway. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, I, and now I'm, of course, playing Elden Ring. Okay, so you told me about this earlier this week, and I said, please don't tell me anything else because I want to talk about this on stream. I want to know about this on stream. So you're playing Elden Ring. How How's it going? What are your initial thoughts? How's it, how's it going so far? So I started playing the Spellcaster class, Astrologer. And so with, that that, with that, it's not super difficult right it's not dark souls difficult you get to kind of stand at range from enemies and just kind of like shoot at them and if they get too close you run away now you do still have to <laughs> like if you need to fight bosses you got to learn how to dodge them and it's got the whole dark souls thing you just you got to learn the timing of the attacks and like how the animation goes, because, you know, if you just start dodge, just start, as soon as they start swinging, you'll finish your dodge too early and they'll hit you, so you got to time it just right, but it's fun. Yeah, it doesn't hold yeah. your hand. Just drops you in the world, and there's tons of little cookies hidden everywhere, and you just get to wander around and find them. It's just like, okay, here you go, now play, right? Like, <laughs> that's what they want you to do, start playing. Now, that sounds great. I can't wait to play this. So I am... Uh, unashamed of my love of like from software titles like I have quite a few that I haven't gotten into yet like a uh, Seiko like heroes die twice mm -hmm. I haven't played that quite yet but I did play Bloodborne which was an amazing experience I played it so much that I ran it back right after finishing because mm -hmm. I, like, I want to do this again because I'm better now and I want to know will I still get clapped up by the basic enemies and I did still get clapped by the basic <laughs> enemies, but I was not surprised this time. Um, yeah, so let's greet some of the, the people watching. We got Yohan is here, Kevin, Crazy Programmer, Let's Go Love from Cuba and from India. Got Jazzy Michael. All right, all right. <laughs> Nuno, what's going on? People are coming in hot questions. With questions. I was going to say, they're coming in hot, like the, the heat is on. Well, Jeremy, since you are, uh, since I'm playing this week, I'm playing this game, uh, Celeste. And I'm so pumped up about playing this uh, with y'all today. So I'm gonna get started, and then I will, I'll let Jeremy uh, handle the uh, massive questions that just came in super hot. Now, are you just starting at the beginning of Celeste here. This looks like maybe the little tutorial stage. Yes, I started over uh, because I don't remember how far I was when I played last time. Did you have you beaten Celeste? No, this game is hard. Um, and I think the challenge is, I'm going to be honest with you, as much as I love Stadia as a product, I do think that the controller is works against you in this game because you have to be so precise. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with a PlayStation controller or an Xbox controller, I would have done even better when it gets harder. But I feel like on the Stadia controller, it's just like the... I don't know, the ergonomics aren't exactly what I feel like I need for a precision platformer. Yeah, it's the same on the Switch. The Switch Pro Controller, the analog stick just wasn't perfect, right? It's like one in 20 times. It's like I'm trying to sprint down right and I sprint right and it ruins everything. <laughs> That's exactly right. 
that's exactly right. So, but yeah, I like Celeste. This is a, you know, I'm not a big fan of like the super like retro pixel art where it's to the point where you can't even make out any features of the characters. But I do like the, I like 16 bit art. I don't like 8 bit. I like 16 bit. Yeah, I I love I know I love this. This is like perfect aesthetic for me. I don't need it any more detailed. But like, imagine if this was like the Super Mario World level of detail, right? What, It'd be what just it that add? much better for me. What does it add? You got everything you need to know right there. <laughs> I guess I don't know. I don't like Nintendo games. I'll tell you that. That's probably why. And because <laughs> Nintendo games look like this, I don't like Nintendo games. All right. So let's go. Let's go look at someone. Some questions here. So. Jazzy Michael asks, any way for Angular Schematics to take a JSON file as input instead of using the CLI, trying to make a no code layer to quickly generate different common hash structures? Uh, I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head, but I think the only way of, like, the only supported way of using schematics is through the Angular CLI today. Um, I was actually just chatting with Doug yesterday, who's the TL for Angular CLI, and we were just like brainstorming uh, different ideas for the future of Angular CLI, you know, over the next many years. And one of the ideas is having a more, um, like, a less, like, not needing to use the command line as much, being able to have more of a UI based experience. Um, and I also know that like architecturally, the schematic stuff is a lot of standalone pieces that are composed in the CLI, but I don't really know how well supported it is to use those standalone pieces on their own. Mm. But so, yeah, I don't so, really know. But then the C, I mean, the schematics are just code. Couldn't, couldn't uh, he just like work 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 within that boundary and just like have his code read a JSON file and then do some configuration based off that because it's for a no code solution. I mean, you would have you see I mean, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, a solution, he could work around it that way, right? Or like when you write a schematic, right? It's just a Node.js file, right? You could do whatever right. you want from there. So if you want to have right. it go read a JSON file, you could do that. Um. But I think the the part that hooks it up to where you run like ng add or ng update mm -hmm. and that goes and you know finds the thing and runs it that part is oh, just all CLI. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I thought about I forgot about that part because we well how do we do ours? Because we, for the material, we have some basic app templates that you can use. But are those just they're those just built in, right? They're not configuration based. Uh yeah, they're just included in the Angular, Angular material package and the CLI knows how to go find that and they they have all of their stuff baked into them. Okay, this game is, I do not remember how to play and I am getting rocked. Like, I can't even like, do the basic puzzles. Yeah. This is not my finest day. That dash over the spikes. Yeah, but I can't remember which buttons. <laughs> There's like two. There's, <laughs> there's like four buttons on the face of your controller. Two of them are jump, two of them are dash. Oh, wait, is that true? That two are dash? Yeah, I think so. Okay, wait, so here's what's funny. The, the jump buttons are Y and A, which are at like top and bottom. Mm -hmm. And then the dashes are left and right, like kind of X and B. So that's helpful. All right, all right, we're back in the game. Now that I remember, it's the same thing. All right. Uh, okay. Nuno asks, "What's the status of MDC web integration into Angular Material?" Uh, it's still ongoing. Uh, slower than uh, I know some folks would like. The I'm trying to think about like what's useful to say here is um, the components that are in experimental today are relatively stable. Um, if you are following along on GitHub, you would see uh, the teams actively working on tooling, on basically like ng update tooling to help people move from the existing components to the MDC based ones because we care very much about bringing everyone along for the ride when we go new places. Uh, and so that work is ongoing. 
Um, inside of Google, we are actively rolling out the MDC components to all of our Angular apps inside of Google, of which there are very many. Uh, it's a very slow process. Um, the way Google works is infrastructure teams like us are centrally responsible for rolling out updates like this. And so uh, we've had to put a lot of work into like tooling and tracking for executing that across all of Google. Um, and we're also in conversations with the material design organization about, we're looking at ways we can uh, support the newest version of the design system uh, relatively soon, um, based on the work that we've done on MDC web already. Uh, we don't have that all the way figured out yet. Um, I'm trying to think there's much more to say there. We're, we're hoping that when we push, this is a hope, right? When we push the MDC based components to stable on NPM, that will have the newest version of the design system available uh, as part of it. Uh, I can't promise that yet or commit to it, but uh, that is our hope. That's a great answer, Jeremy. I am uh, just really having a hard time playing a video game in front of people and being so bad at it. I'm just like, <laughs> this is so bad. I'm going to get better as I play, but I forgot that like when you start something new, you're not automatically good. And you got to like keep learning. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just feel some type of way. Yeah. Sometimes the, the only way for through to growth is through struggle. Mm. Yeah, I have to pay attention to this. Because right. I keep wanting to look in our streaming software window, and that's not the one to look at. Oh, well, see, that's my... that's the mistake you got, is when I do this and I'm playing the game, that's full screen. <laughs> ah, see. I'm not looking at you at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is cool. I got a new monitor. Oh, what's up here? Nothing? What do you have there? Is that a trick? Lures that there's nothing up there, and then you nothing fall down. up there. Okay. Boo. Um, I got a new monitor and it's ultra wide, which I've been talking about on Twitter for quite a while. And it's great because I, it can do picture, oh, come on. It can do picture by picture mode, which I have my other lap, my other computer playing the game. And uh, yeah, having a good time. Wait, what's down there? Yeah. You know, next month, Mark, I think we got to look at a new way of, of streaming this stuff because your uh, your game video is coming through super low frame rate. Oh, really? Yeah. I think right. we gotta we got to figure out some, like, professional OBS stuff. I think it's time for that. I really do think you're right because right now I'm streaming through a Chrome tab. Come on, Mark. You can do this. Get your act together. Uh, streaming through a Chrome tab. Yeah. Although, what's and the deal, Stadia? I thought the whole uh, part of the whole value add was you just put, push a button and you're streaming on YouTube. I Man, that is such a good point. And I really wish that that, that feature was like <laughs> working in the way that we hope. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch to the Stadia team and we're going to solve this. <laughs> you heard it here first. Mark is going to the Stadia team. Yeah, good luck with that. Uh, <laughs> Next, let's, uh, let's answer another question. Uh, Kevin is asking, uh, they are uploading several videos on advanced Angular topics in Spanish, such as change detection, injection dependency. What topics do we recommend as fundamental for an advanced Angular topic? Um, oh, one man. off the top of my head, performance optimization, right? All uh, performance yeah. best practices. We actually have that on our list to write like a formal guide on Angular IO for um, it's, it's very high on the documentation backlog. Mm -hmm. uh, what about you, Mark? So if I'm thinking advanced topics for, for learners, I would say content projection. I think that's the thing that people don't quite understand uh, when they're like making that transition into advanced from like beginner. And so you get your like the view children and content children. Wait, that's that right? It's, Wait, view children. What's the other one? I forgot the name of it. So, Not so view content. children, content children. That's that's queries, oh. and then content projection is like ng content. Yeah. Ooh, can you go up here? Is there a secret up area? No. It is farce. It is a 
force. Yeah, zones is another one. Understanding what zones does in Angular and how it impacts authoring your application. True, 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 true. Uh, always, it's always good to have um, RxJS content. You can talk about some stuff there because people, you know, some like advanced pipelines. I think that could be helpful. But thanks for making those videos in Spanish, first off. Uh, that's great. That's great. We'd love to see like content in different languages serving different communities. So please, 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 please. Mark, Actually, uh, can you tag me in your videos? I want to see what you what you're making, Kevin. Mark, ¿se habla español? Sí, claro. Yo puedo hablar español y yo puedo entender español también. So, Kevin, uh, in Twitter, just I <laughs> said that was the worst like Spanglish ever. Um, Kevin, just uh, on Twitter at Mark Texan. Mention me so I can see what you're working on. See, I took like four years of Spanish in school and I remember very little of it. <laughs> ah, you know, Spanish is fun, man. I mean, I, I speak Spanish at home, which helps. And I still practice every day because there's still so much for me to learn. So, um, you know, but we got starving musician back in the building. Let's go, Michael Faith in the building too. What's up? Good to see you. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's see. I see Michael Faith ask. Uh, I've mentioned the possibility of moving to CSS custom properties for theming and the material. Would that mean moving away from SAS for theming? No, actually, we would use both. Uh, so the way that would work um, today, we have the base component styles are defined in the style URLs of the components directly. And the theme styles are defined in SAS mixins. And we basically depend on emitting those theme styles as global styles and not participating in view encapsulation. And that is the way Angular Material theming works today. And it's kind of a pain in even terms of implementing them because you have to just remember, it's like, oh, if I want to change something with color, I have to go put that in the theme mixin and not in the component files. And you know, even things like border, it's like, okay, I'll define the border width and border style over here and the border color over here. But with CSS variables, we could define all of the styles in the components style URL and then just have the SAS mix in output CSS variables. So it's backwards compatible and it still gives people the flexibility of only including the values that they need for their application. All right, you got Rodney, this, Mark. You're never late. Okay. Yeah. And in fact, we hope that when we uh, switch to CSS variables, we'll be able to expand the theming system so that we can provide even more areas of customization on the components. Uh, that's one of the things we've been talking about with the material design team of like how how granularly can we get into customizing these things? Uh, let's see, what else we got here? Um, any advice on improving Lighthouse scores for Angular applications? Uh, I feel like Minko is really the expert on this. I think there's a whole series on web.dev about this, right? Mm -hmm. We do have some content about that. We should get Minko on here for a performance-based episode because he has a lot of tips about like Angular performance. Yeah. So here, I'm gonna I'm gonna open up web.dev and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna find Minko's articles. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. So it's actually web.dev slash Angular, and there's a whole series of articles here about. Uh, making your Angular applications faster. So go check that out. Um, and I think, like I mentioned earlier, we are working on a, or we will be working on a performance guide on Angular IO at some point. All right, Mark, Mark, do you know the secret here? I don't. I was trying to figure something out. Wait, okay. Yeah. Ah! All right, so right, here's, here. here's how this works. Spoilers for anyone who cares about this. So do you see the, the little creatures there, little butterflies? You have to note 
that when they they do their little expand out they're in certain positions yeah right so let's see like white is up yellow is up left and so on and then this little computer its message sends out a certain color pattern you have to dash in that color pattern to the directions that the butterflies correspond to okay so let's see so oh so i gotta dash in those the i see i see actually okay so it's like dash up and then so it'll be white purple blue orange that's a lot i'm not remembering all this so dash up then no come on i gotta like write it down to do this <laughs> what do yeah. i get if i do this this is the real question you get a star oh so if i dash up so like up then purple all right let's see what else we got oh. welcome everybody we got some more people filing in oh where's purple coming from let's see uh really so let's good. see uh ninjedi asks is there a plan to support immutability in two-way bindings i actually don't know what that means uh if you have a if you could like clarify that or show an example of what you mean i might be able to answer but as far as it, like we don't really have any active plans even in our backlog to do anything with two-way binding so probably not <laughs> Um, can we ask the material design team to add native search functionality to their website? We can ask. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I've made a lot of requests to the material design team over the years, and uh, I don't always get what I ask for. <laughs> We don't always get what we want, but we get what we need. All right. So here's a hack that I use when I play video games. I write stuff down if I have to. So I'm going to write this down the directions. And I know if somebody's watching at home, like, how could he not know what to do? But I don't. So I'm going to do up is white. Okay, let's do this. Do you have, like, a game notes notepad that you just keep at your desk? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's usually the back of an envelope. Uh, and I just keep a lot of envelopes. You know where I got that from? So this is a true story about me. People may not know this. Um, my career path before like full time, like software development, blah, blah, blah. My dream was to be an indie game designer. So I was like trying to really put a lot of effort into like indie game design. So I was going to meetups. I was learning Unity. I was like, I had made a couple of games. But they were never as good as this stuff. This stuff is the worst because it's so good. And somehow it's by one person. And I'm like, I couldn't even get close to this. That's how I knew that indie game design wasn't necessarily my future. But so when I watched this movie called Indie Game, where they chronicle the making of Fez, Super Meat Boy, and one other like Braid. small game. And Braid, yes. Yes. I don't know if you remember what the what the team behind Super Meat Boy team meet. He used to have all those like pieces of paper like all around his desk all is like you know what i got to do next that's where i got that from so i would grab like back of envelopes and i would just make to-do lists and i still do that to this day and that was like 10 years ago mm -hmm. yeah this game wasn't actually made by one person i think the main team was two people and the music was done by uh what is it selena something um, I've listened to the soundtrack, so I'm going to go check my music streaming history. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Lena Rain I think, did the soundtrack for this. Excellent soundtrack. They also did the soundtrack for um, the new Chicory game, Chicory A Colorful Tale. Great music to listen to while programming. You know, I find that that uh, game music is excellent for programming because it's always like focused on like a goal. So the music kind of drives you towards something and I always feel like motivated when I listen to game music when I program. Mm -hmm. All right, so now I can do it. I wrote it down. It, that's, that's, I would not have remembered this. So let's see. 
Oh, we've got uh, we've got Stephen Fluin in the chat, Mark. Oh, Stephen, what up though? I saw Stephen earlier this week, and he sent me a nice email. Thank you for that, a nice email. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh. <laughs> it didn't take your work away. Okay, good. So I, I got this thing. Oh, I, I would have walked away without knowing to dash into that thing because I couldn't like jump on it. You uh, figured Steven flew in the chat. Let's go. Yeah, Steven asked, when is Angular 14 coming out? You know when it's coming out. Tomorrow. <laughs> Coming out tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> party. <laughs> it's like it's April Fool's Day for uh, folks. Don't forget about that. So you never know. Uh, what we're gonna say. Yeah, it, uh, it's coming out approximately six months after Angular 13. I can tell you when Angular 15 is coming out. Approximately six months after Angular 14. <laughs> True. Like give or take a week in either direction. Um, unless you know, I think sometimes we. What is it? It's like maybe like a two, maybe three week variance at most, just based on whether we're going to be at a conference or if there's a holiday or yeah. Google performance evaluation season. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, this is so funny. I'm playing better now, even though I'm losing a ton than I was when I played at the original playthrough because I never dashed into any of these walls. So I never saw half the stuff. I'm like, I got all the things that I saw. Because <laughs> you have to land to get credit for it. Yep. I mean, how can you enjoy your strawberry if you're on spikes? That's true. That, that game logic holds up. No, I think canonically you're not eating the strawberries as you go. You're saving them for later. No! Why did I do that? <laughs> Wait, somebody <laughs> left at the death that I just had, and I deserve that. Oh, it was uh, hilarious Robert, when you when you unlocked the heart and then immediately fell to your death. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yo, Jeremy, this is for you. Um, on Netflix, there's a superhero show called Raising Dion that's actually really dope. I don't know if you saw it or not. I haven't. So I'm really behind on TV because my my girlfriend doesn't love to watch TV. She's much more of a reader. Um, and so I have a hard time convincing her to watch shows. <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, readers are leaders, so I get it. I get it. Um, oh, come on, Mark. Uh, and also just, you know, spending too much time playing games. Uh, yeah. I should look at some more questions. Steven says, I thought 12 was pronounced. It probably was. You would know. You were there. <laughs> All right. Um, I think... His 12 blog has inspired my blogs moving forward after that. So, yeah. I honestly, I don't remember if we've already announced the date for 14. <laughs> See, we just, our operational practices, we just err on the side of not committing to any dates ever. <laughs> Jeremy, did you just see what I just did? Did you see the skill by which I got down in that little cavern? It was masterful. No, I was looking at the chat. Oh, it's all right. We can watch it right. later and talk about yeah. it. No! When I look over here, I'm looking at the chat. Yeah. Uh, let's no. see. How is Angular Universal uh, going to detect when all microtasks, microtasks are done in order to serialize the DOM without zone.js? Um, so this is a saying, with the zone.js, that's going to be optional in the near future. Uh, we have not started the, like, any of the design work on like optional zones, right? It's it's something we would like to explore um, relatively in the near future, maybe next year. Um, obviously, like it, 2023 is too far in the future for us to have like very specific plans. But I think at a high level, optional zones is a candidate for one of our like highest priority things for 2023. Um, and yeah. Figuring out how it's gonna work is, that's the work. <laughs> uh, let's see, how thorough of a skill set does one need to try to apply for being part of the Google Angular team? Uh, so 
it really is just getting through Google's, um, like there's two parts of it, right? Um, there's one is like just getting hired at Google, which is obviously uh, challenging. Uh, Google has a notoriously difficult hiring process and interview process. And then beyond that, there is a team fit. And um, the team fit is really based on like the specific experiences and the things you've worked on before. And so obviously the Angular team, uh, we're always looking for people with really extensive web development experience um, or even better if you've worked on something like a web framework before or in that space. Um, but then, you know, there's also other stuff we do in terms of like build tools and web accessibility on components. Um, I don't think we're hiring right now. I think we're all full up. Uh, we used all we used all of the headcount that uh, Big Google gave us, uh, but maybe we'll get more someday. Uh, let's see what else we got. It says um, Manuel here asks: Does the Angular team has the ever, Angular team ever considered block pattern implementation in TypeScript for Angular? I actually don't know what that is. Uh, do you have a link or uh, some code? Let's see, uh, Digital Nomad asks, uh, they're going through the Angular documentation. I'm wondering, do you think someone can learn Angular with the documentation alone? Uh, yes. Comprehensively, probably not. Like to be, being honest, I think there are some very real holes in our documentation. The wonderful thing about being open source is that the community has filled a lot of those holes with amazing articles and blog posts and videos and the Angular team is always immensely grateful that the community does that stuff. It's part of why we do open source in the first place. Um, you know, sometimes we have to justify to Google, like, why are we spending so much time on this open source thing? And uh, it's things like that that really make a super compelling case for it. And that said, um, there's a lot you can learn from the documentation, right? We've got the Tour of Heroes tutorial. There's the like phone e-commerce uh, tutorial on there. Uh, lots of examples. I think you can very easily get started, and um, we'll keep we'll can keep we're, we're trying to make that getting started experience better and easier, more understandable. And Mark will keep falling in these spikes forever. <laughs> Okay, so I found a little like glitch. Oh wait, but I want to do. So I do want to say something about the getting started experience. This is something that Jeremy and I are actually talking about together. We spend a lot of time thinking about this together because we totally acknowledge that there are some new opportunities there, and we're working on what can this look like, you know, mm -hmm. moving forward. So uh, this yeah. is one of the projects that he and I get to work on. I have Robin, a... the strawberry is worth it. Yeah, the strawberry is worth it. Do you know what you do at the end with the strawberries? No. Do you, do you like give them to somebody and help somebody? No, you make a pie. Okay. The, uh, okay. See, that's the thing I'm trying to do. There's a way to jump around it without using my boost. And I'm trying to do that. But I can only do it every like once every 50th death. Where I can get like enough boost. I mean, see. Ugh. Jeremy, did you see me do it where I jumped up there without using my boost? Uh, it looks like you could see? wall jump. Yeah, there you go. Aha, there you go. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that is very quintessential of this game. If you're like, yes, 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 no. Also, that's what I'm doing. It's like a little mini wall jump at the bottom. I'm just doing it so fast. Ah. <laughs> See, that's what I was doing. Okay, I know it was a wall jump. Thank you, Jeremy. Jeremy is better at games than I am, so I always like relish you, the advice. You say that, but you play every game on the hardest difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean, look, it's like blunt force solutions when you're interviewed. It doesn't make it like good, you just do it. Yeah. You, you gotta ride that, uh... I know, you know what I think you gotta do, Mark, is on the way, when that thing is going back, You've got to jump up and grab the the ledge as it's going past. Because once you get back to the left here, there's no way to land and get your jump back. 
or get your dash back. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Let's yeah. go there. Let's go back oh, to the question. Can I answer one of, one of the questions real quick? Yeah, yeah. Answer one of the so questions. So there's one question from Rotik says, can Flutter replace Angular or can Angular deprecate, be depreci get depreciated by React? Well, I want to answer that question. I have a really good answer for you. You know, the way to figure out what can do what to what is to figure out what you need and then choose the right solution because everything is great. Yeah, so if, you, if you've watched our stream before, you know, Mark and I say everything is good, <laughs> right? right. Angular is good, Flutter is good, React is good. They're all good. Mm -hmm. And right, so choose that. But they're all different, right? Uh, and there's no such thing as one solution for every problem. Right. So if you, oh, you got it. Uh, if you, <laughs> if you like Angular, use it. If you like React, use it. And they're maybe good at different things. Maybe they have different strengths and weaknesses. That's okay. Both, there's room for both things to exist. Um, and I think this, this carries into uh, something somebody else asked, which I'm going to paraphrase as why why is there just in general like hate in the like twitterverse or web dev community for certain things uh which can sometimes include angular and i think the answer is like complicated it's a combination of like some degree of the tribalism in human nature of like associating yourself with a group and then wanting to uh promote your group at the expense of other groups um, I think part of it is that um, it's easier to hone in on the weaknesses of uh, like older technologies because they've just been around longer and people have had more time to run into those weaknesses. Um, uh, Mark, any thoughts on this? Yeah, you know, and the same thing is true about new technologies. So like new technologies usually come around because they solved a specific pain point that an existing technology has done. So in that moment, it's really easy to kind of get wrapped up in this idea that like the new thing is all you'll need because it helped this one thing that you, you had a problem with. So like you, you had that like new car feel, like your last car, you know, needed a replacement seat and you had a really hard time with it. And this new car has automatic seats. And so now you're in love, but that doesn't mean that the new car is perfect or that the other car was not helpful to you either. So you have to kind of like look at it from, Hey, is this what I need? Is it going to solve my problems? Okay. I think that's helpful. If not, then, you know, I don't know. I just don't think of it in terms of what can replace what I think of it in terms of what can help me ship. That's my like real like sincere answer about a lot of this. What can help me ship? Like I did build some Flutter apps because the type of app that I was building at the time, this Flutter was the thing that can help me ship. So I used it. And then I went to build a web app and then I liked Angular for that because Angular, I was like, oh yeah, ng new. And then I started creating stuff and components and routes and everything from the command line. I was like, this is really fast. This is really good. Fast and productivity wise, right? So. Yeah, I think about it like that. What can help you ship? Because everything is good. All right, let's see here. What else we got? Let's see. With standalone components coming soon, would you say that the in the future, Angular application could have almost no modules, or do you think that modules will always be present and pivotal in some degree? Uh, the plan is to someday eliminate ng modules so that they are not necessary at all and we have fully moved off of them so that they they don't exist um obviously that is a very long-term thing because first we will land standalone component uh, standalone components and then there's going to be a very long period where the two exist side by side and so people can gradually move over as it makes sense for them and the whole time we'll be listening to community feedback on how the process is going and adjust based on that. But why is that, Jeremy? Why do we have to keep keep them around at the same time for, for any time? Because we care about stability, Mark. We care about supporting all of our existing Angular clients out there and making sure that their application code keeps working and that when we do change things, we run schematics, ng update to make everything just keep working. 
right? Uh, and we know not everybody can update at the same time, right? There's going to be some libraries that are using ng modules. And so if you want to switch your app over to standalone components, you need to still be able to use those ng modules. Right? Yes. Um, well, I gotta get the strawberry germ. What else we got over here? Let's see. How to convince a client to update from AngularJS to uh, to Angular? Uh, <laughs> it's better. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. It's like if you have a if you have an application that's in AngularJS and it's working, um, that like it can be hard to to sell needing to switch off of something. Maybe the like. There's some argument for that AngularJS isn't like actively developed anymore and that it's not getting new features, although there are, um, you know, even though Google has ended its official support for AngularJS at this point, there are like uh, third parties out there that are, um, you know, linked on the AngularJS site that provide the kind of extended support for it for, um, for like security kind of things and browser compatibility things to make sure that it keeps working. Um, uh, but that's like, the, that's like, you know, a paid service that's offered by those third parties. Um, so I wrote a blog about this. So if you check the Angular blog, if you need to stick with Angular JS, check the Angular blog. Cause I wrote a blog about what long-term support looks like from some of these third party services. And we don't have recommendations, but we do list some of the ones that are available. So you can at least come on. So at least you can at least know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, ultimately, oh, like, to that, though. Oh, go ahead, Jeremy. Yep. I was going to say, like, ultimately, decisions like this of like whether to migrate an app or to rewrite an app, like you have to make it on a case by case basis and use your best judgment on the, like the technical merits of like what is your return on investment of doing this work, right? Like, is this going to make you faster? Is this going to be able to like make your business more money? Is it going to be able to improve someone's life in a meaningful way? It's all a judgment call. With you on that. Oh, I should not have used my boost. I was going to say that too. Literally the same thing. Good. We're on the same page because. No! Yeah. All right. So we got another question here. This is a really good one. I feel like we should give a talk on this at NGConf. Someone should give a talk Ooh. at NGConf on this. Is um, uh, There is a lot of hype around the idea of virtual DOM in some frameworks. Uh, why is this not in Angular? Does it really improve performance? Um, it's really just a they, it is one particular approach to how you can approach, uh, how you can deal with rendering in a web framework. Um, Angular takes a different approach, and so uh, this is going to be a very, <laughs> very naive explanation of this. But like virtual DOM is your your framework, right? And your like the user code that's using that framework. It's just like yeah, just render, right? Just like render, render. And it all ends up in this virtual DOM, so you don't have to care about the performance implications of mutating the real DOM when you do that. And then the virtual DOM mechanism takes care of uh, coalescing those DOM updates into one like real DOM update and only making the changes you need to. That's the diff between your virtual DOM and the real DOM. Angular just doesn't need that because um, in the way Angular is architected, the framework keeps track of all of the specific spots in the DOM that need to that might need to be updated because there's some dynamic expression there. And it knows when those expressions change, the exact spot in the DOM that needs to be updated, and it just makes that one change in the DOM for that expression. Now, one area of improvement for Angular someday is that it could do a better job at coalescing those updates across the application than it does today. Um, it also uh, has situations where it interleaves user application code with framework code, which isn't the most ideal thing. Um, but if you are mindful of not like touching the DOM and causing layout shifts or like repaints, reflows, that kind of thing in your like lifecycle events, then it shouldn't be a, uh, it shouldn't uh, really impact you.
let's see, Ninjedi here says that they can probably beat both of us in an Angular coding challenge. I don't know about that. I did competitive uh, programming in college. <laughs> Who said they can beat uh, us in an Angular coding challenge? Throw down. Okay, maybe. I was, a, maybe. I was an ACM ICPC uh, world finalist. <laughs> oh, snaps. I don't know what that means, but you was in the top of the world, which is pretty impressive. <laughs> No, it's just this. It, uh, like, there's this ACM programming contest for um, it's the International Collegiate Programming Contest, and uh, I think they have like it's a hundred universities that can make it into the world finals. I don't know. Like, this was all I don't know how many years ago. What it, um, uh, this was over ten years ago now. I'm getting older, um, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure this what? thing still exists, but um, yeah, my my team managed to make it into world finals a couple of times. So, but let me ask Nin Jedi a question about this though. Can you get 17 out of 20 hearts in Celeste? Cause I just did. So the proof is right there. Yo, Jeremy, you see what I did though? Like that's pretty good for being horrible at this game. The death number is not representative of my actual play skill or in most games, or maybe it is. I don't know, but I'm pretty happy about this. I don't know where those three strawberries are though. Like, yeah. Did that. you find the mixtape? Oh, I forgot about the mixtape. Yeah, you missed the mixtape. We're not tape. going back in. We're not going back in on this one. You know why? Because the, the streets need us to keep playing more. What the million deaths, Rodwin? How else would I learn without the million deaths? How else yeah. is it possible? The the death number represents your personal growth. So I'm going to go for double the deaths here. Um, wait, but I did see a good question uh, from Josh. Let's hook Josh up with some answers around it. I really like that question. Uh, can we talk about how how on push change detection works? Oh boy, that's a hard one because I love it. <laughs> it's, I love it. not, it's not very well defined. Um, and it's actually really poorly documented today. Um, the idea is like setting on push limits when change detection runs because out of the box, Angular runs its change detection uh, at a high level anytime something happens where something in this, this case is a DOM event, an async event like set timeout or a promise resolving or an HTTP request resolving or a handful of other things, right? A bunch of stuff that it's like patched by zones. And that can lead to change detection running too often. And so on push will change it so that change detection should only run for that component when either an event happens within that component subtree Right, so that component or one of its descendant has an event, um, or when one of the inputs for that component changes as the result of a template binding. And I say that last part because if you change an input in your TypeScript code, um, having used something like view child or content child, that won't trigger the change detection for on push, which could actually mean that your component state can get out of sync with your rendered state. And so it's only when it is changed as a result of a template binding that uh, that will apply. Yeah, I would like for someday, this is all just like, this is all pie in the sky thinking, but I would like for someday for us to consolidate on a single change detection strategy. I think it's just confusing to have two options. Yeah. Especially if one option ends up being like the preferred one mm -hmm. that the community adopts. And so I think about that. I don't, know, I don't know what to do right here. Get out of here. You know what? I'm not going to let y'all get in my head saying how bad I am at this game. I'm going to keep going. Hold on. I'm missing some skills. Something is missing. Mark, we want to see you overcome. You will. I'm about <laughs> to come over to the computer and turn it off. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I'm about to do oh see I knew I was missing something. Look at this. Oh, this doesn't do anything. 
That's a different room. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm not going down there. That looks spooky. I had to figure Zoom. out how to activate this cosmic jello. Let's see. Round and Wiz, round, uh, round win. I hope I'm saying that right. It says you should play Dead Space 2 on the hardest level. Only three saves allowed the whole game. <gasps> uh, yeah, we should take suggestions for games we play. Oh, wait, hold on. Go yeah. back. Go back. See the little brown patch there? Can you dash down into that? Is that anything? Yeah, I was trying that one. No, it's I'm nothing. Okay. Power. Never mind. Yeah. No, it's a good idea. I, I was doing it earlier. I, I thought I had something cooking. Oh! Um, Dead Space is two of my favorite things. A hard game combined with horror. Like, I love to be scared. And so that game sounds like right up my alley. Man, I hate horror. It's not for me. <laughs> right? Like, oh. The Last of Us and The Last of Us 2 are the, like, that's as, that's as horror as it gets for me. And even for those, right, the horror is really about uh, the human condition more so than zombies are trying to eat you. True, 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 true. I don't have... It's, oh, here's, a, a, here's a good extender. Here's a good Go question. Ahead, Which Google apps are made with Angular? Uh, Google Cloud Platform Developer Console is... Uh, Probably, maybe the biggest Angular app anywhere. Although I know there's some large, you know, banks and other financial institutions that have very large Angular apps, so it's hard to say. But yeah, Google Cloud Console is um, a very big Angular app. Uh, Google Domains, um, a lot of Google Analytics. Um, um, is Firebase Console? Yeah, Angular? Firebase Console. Um, Inside of Google are like Google's bug tracker, Google's code review tool, um, code viewer, project tracker planner. Um, what else? A uh, bunch like bunch of internal Google tools that like all of Google uses are built with it. Um, uh, Material IO <laughs> is a is an Angular app, although ironically does not use Angular Material. Um, <laughs> the uh, fonts.google.com is an Angular app. Uh, Google Voice. Google Play Books. All right, I need some help from the streets. I do not know what to do. Uh, well, there's a strawberry there. Yeah, but I can't jump far enough. Um, you, let's see, what could you do here? Um, you could like do the, like, I forget what it's called, but do the thing where you dash and wall jump while dashing. That would probably get you over to that left platform. So like jump off of this little wall. Yeah. Like, been bleeding so, my feet. so what you do here is jump dash straight up and then wall jump to the left while you're still like mid dash or just at the end of your dash. <laughs> this may not be the way you're supposed to do this room though. So, so dash straight up wall jump. Like... Yeah. So the, the trick is you have to wall jump to the left, like as part of the dash, right? If you dash and then wall jump, you won't, you'll lose all your momentum. Like that kind of, right? Or is that not what you're saying? Oh, you almost had it, I think. I don't know if that's actually going to work here, but it's something you could try. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm here for the building. Wait, somebody tried to tell me what to do. Um, yeah. I can't get the strawberry right now. I knew, that, I knew that was right. I felt it in my heart that I was missing something. He told me, let's see, go to the bottom right. Okay, go right. Do, 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 do. Man, Jeremy, you know, I feel like we should... Really, I mean, I feel like this is a different career path for both of us. Like, we should play some more games and just, like, do this for a living. I mean, I play games all the time. <laughs> you could just start That's streaming. That's what I'm them. saying. <laughs> like, why aren't we just, like, famous streamers at this point? Like, I feel like... I don't I don't know that anybody wants to watch me just play Elden Ring, though. Yeah, but together, we could do something special. That's what I'm thinking about. Like, supporting each other and, like, you know, the... Ah! <laughs> All right, what else we got here? 
Um, does Google use any other web frameworks besides Angular? So yes, um, there is a, another Google internal, not open source web framework that is used at Google. Um, I'm not sure how much I'm allowed to say about it. Um, I think we've talked about it at ng-conf before, the fact that like it exists. Um, the team that works on that is our sister team. Like we are in the same organization um, under Sarah Drasner. And um, we're actually, we work pretty closely with them. Um, uh, yeah, they have a really cool tool that is very, very tailored to Google's technology stack. Um, it, like it wouldn't even make sense to open source because <laughs> it's so tightly coupled with Google's like build system and server, like production server system and everything that um, like they, they provide a really nice developer experience for Googlers because it is so tightly integrated. Um, but that means it's, it's not something that would make sense in the open source world. Um, and then there's also, if you remember, uh, Angular Dart exists. Um, so back in the early uh, Angular, like two through four or five days, um, when Angular first came out, there was a Dart version of Angular. And uh, that was open source for a while. And eventually the they decided to stop open source development on it and only focus on uh, Google internal development because the adoption in the open source world um, was like it wasn't really enough for them to be able to keep spending time on the open source side of things and so that's still chugging along inside of google um but is yeah not open source anymore uh let's see anurag i didn't do anything we did it together as a family as a community all right this was a joint effort and now we're reaping the benefits of this cosmic jelly on the screen. Yeah. Thank you for the support. Now let's um, get down here. We need this strawberry. We haven't had lunch. How do we do that? Let's see. Oh, is the is it a mirror thing? Right? Like you gotta Is the mirror related to the strawberry? You gotta like It's probably not. Oh, I think yeah. the mirror is just like a battling thing. Yeah, that's all right, but we, we got this <laughs> noise. Ninja, I listen. We are in the streets together building uh, my, my game skills. So we're doing it. We're doing it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's see. Someone, oh, also, like when I was talking about web framework, someone asked about Flutter. Um, yeah, Flutter is used inside of Google. Um, I'm honestly, I'm not sure about how widely used Flutter Web is. Um, or, or what would be built with it. Uh, that's just not something I'm, I'm, I'm in the loop on. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see, what else? Um, can we give an example of any big, well-written Angular app which, is, which has code publicly available? Ooh, I don't know about that. Um, because all of our, like, the applications we work with inside of Google are all, like, closed source. Um, and I don't know of like, like there's a bunch of large enterprise apps out there that are, you know, we've chatted with over the years at large financial institutions and banks and airlines and insurance companies and none of them are open source. <laughs> um, one app I can, one real app I can think of is um, it's like a TensorFlow dashboard app that's open source, but it's not like, it's not like a big enterprise app. Um, I think there's like a Kubernetes kind of like dashboard or administration tool or something like that that's open source. But again, I don't know how big it is. Well, can we ask this question? How big is big that people are looking for? Because I have an idea, Jeremy, based on this question. Like, what if we did like a 20% project, something like that with the team and we built something like big as an open source example of like a large scale Angular app. I mean like something like let's re and I don't mean a clone. I mean like a fully functional yeah. kind of generic app, but it's, a, but it represents what the people in the streets want. Right. So it's like, what if we built 
um, like an, uh, food, not food ordering. I hate apps about food ordering. What if we built like a hospital administration app, right? Like we really built out the needs for that mm -hmm. and open source that. And then that could serve as some interesting yeah. thing or whatever. You know what I mean? I would shy away from anything medical related because that's a very heavily regulated thing, but maybe, that's uh, true. Oh. uh, Right. But I, I know what you mean, right? Something like an insurance company or something like right. a bank, right? Um, like an actual yeah. enterprise app. And this not was just like, oh, here's a news app. This was something I pitched um, a few years ago of like, hey, we should define a handful of different application archetypes and build yeah. like example applications for each of things, each of those like large enterprise app and like consumer like e-commerce site and, you know, whatever, like a blogging, like article driven site, stuff like that. And I think it's just a matter of time, right? It's hard to, it's hard to prioritize that stuff versus things like features on the framework or bug fixes or, you know, components accessibility work, right? There's a thousand things in our backlog that um, are competing for the team's attention. Sure. But I wonder if we could like drive it forward with uh, some different, like different ways, because you know, there, if this is just public information, there are lots of Angular developers at Google who, you know, write these big uh, apps. So I wonder if that's something, I don't know. I want to write this down because I want to follow up with, with some ideas about this. Cause I think that we could do it with a combination of like combined efforts because of the bandwidth thing. It's a real thing, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jeremy, yeah. You have to do something special. I, I've already got a twenty percent project though, so I can't help you there, Mark. You do, so you're so busy. I have a twenty percent project too, so I can't start this as my twenty percent project. But what's your twenty percent project? Oh, uh, our internal training. Oh, right, right. The the internal Angular course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my my twenty percent project is also a uh, like a learning kind of course thing. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I've been, I haven't worked on it in a while. Um, I, I'm working on a course for um, how to think about building accessible UIs by composing well-established interaction patterns. Oh, I love that. And I, the reason I haven't worked on it in a long time is because I had a partner. I had a, there was a Googler who um, I was working with on it, but they left the company. And once they did that, I kind of lost steam. <sighs> that's, that's disappointing. And I'm really frustrated. You know why? Because you know what I almost said was let me help. And I just already <laughs> talked about helping with another project. This is my problem with my. Yep. Uh... <laughs> you just want to help, Mark. You always want to help. I... I always want to help because I really book friends at home. Let me tell you something, something about me. That's really like true. I really do believe in angular and I really believe in what angular can do. And I also believe in like supporting people. And so when I see people trying to build something, I'm like, Hey, how can I use my gifts and talents to help support this thing going forward? So when we talk about making angular better, I'm always down for that. Jeremy's talking about this course. I'm like, yes, let's do it. Let's let's, because I think we can serve so many people. Think about how many users that we artificially eliminate from our applications because they're not accessible, right? We artificially limit our audience for our, our applications all the time. We just do better. And this is a way to help people to do better. Yeah, let's see. Okay, I'll put uh, my soapbox away. Ru Rustam asks, internal Angular course, how can we watch that? By getting hired Can't. at Google. <laughs> all right, I'm like, that's the only way you can see that. Um, um, it is a course. Don't worry. I'm, it's okay. focused on uh, use the use of Angular inside of Google, which is kind of a different flavor than the open source use of Angular in that like, the internal course is tailored towards Google's build system and, you know, the Google, the way Google does um, bundle optimization and productionization and that kind of thing. Um, it, like it teaches some of the framework stuff too, but there's, there's a ton of resources out there in the wide world for that. Can I tell them about my course? Uh, yeah, of course. Okay, I'm making a course for you folks anyway. So you get to see some of that, but you won't get to see our internal stuff. But the things that are like uh, in the, the intersection between both internal and external will be included in the course.
that is going to come from us. It'll be free. Everybody can use it. Let's see. Let's see. No. Have I, missed, have I missed any questions in here? Uh, someone says we should build a version of Stack Overflow that is more friendly to beginners. <laughs> Somebody did that already. It was called askquestions.tech. And it went away because nobody yeah. used it. Do you and do you ever have your period of trying to go and answer a lot of questions on Stack Overflow, Mark? All the time. And then I'm like, I don't even know what they're talking about. I cannot answer that. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I had that period uh, earlier on in my career and eventually like lost interest in it. But I, I managed to get like, I made one answer that has become like the top Google search result for this question, uh, which oh, is, uh, what is an example of live lock um, contrasted to deadlock? Um, I actually wrote that answer while I was studying for my Google interview uh, almost 10 years ago now. So uh, I, I made that answer and it actually became the like, first Google result for like, what is live lock or example of live lock or something like that. Oh, let's so go. That was like, I just keep collecting Stack Overflow points over the last, uh, over the last 10 years from that. <laughs> you know who was a prolific Stack Overflower from Google? Puff. From Firebase? Wait, who? Uh, Frank, Van, Frank Van Puffin? Uh, Puff will do, I mean, he was ranked number one in the world uh, two weeks ago. Oh, snap. Yeah, he's prolific at uh, the whole, you know, Stack Overflow. <laughs> Very cool. Let's see. Uh, is there oh. an Angular certification officially available from Google? No, I don't think Google does certifications. Um, and I don't know that we would even want to. I, I would feel uncomfortable being like, here's a certificate for, uh, for anything. Cause I'm not even sure I know how to, how to use Angular the best. <laughs> <laughs> Preach to the choir, my friend. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Somebody here asked, uh, any words on dynamic directives? Um, so. We're not doing any work on being able to dynamically apply a directive at runtime. Um, that's not really something we're, we're working on at the moment, but we are actively doing uh, investigation on being able to apply directives to the host elements of components and maybe other directives. So the idea here being Say we make a directive like CDK menu that adds in the like, keyboard handling and all the like write accessibility stuff for menu. We'd be able to take that directive and make another component over here called my custom menu or cool menu and apply that directive in the component itself, like to its own host element, instead of having to apply it inside of the directive template or in the component template, I mean. Um, it's complicated because it raises all kinds of questions of like, how do you bind things into that directive? Or um, what is the flow of data between the component and that directive? Can that directive have other directives on top of it? Can you have this chain of directives that you're applying? Uh, is that confusing because it makes it hard to know about where certain things are coming from, right? So if you find an element that's getting a CSS class on it and you say, okay, uh, where's the CSS coming from? It's like, oh, well, I have this component and this component has these three directives on it, but this directive, well, this directive applies three directives to itself. And one of those, oh, one of those is applying that class. So it can be really add this like indirection that can make it hard to understand the code. Um, can you have to answer the question of, can the component inject those directives? Can those directives inject that component? Uh, can they mutate each other's state? <laughs> So there's a lot of questions we have to figure out for like, how to make this useful, but not confusing and not making your application more complicated than you'd like it to be. So trying to like, you know, figure out what is a, what is a design that would accomplish those goals. 
Um, and there's a chance we might reach the conclusion that it's like, no, actually, this is like maybe not the best idea because it makes things too complicated. Uh, but personally, I, I, I'm pretty optimistic that uh, it's something we will we will do eventually. We will like, you know, move from this investigation phase into a like actually doing it phase. Uh, because I think the feature would be really useful. Especially for the CDK. You know what's not useful? This game. Oh, uh, you're just salty. So I you am. Got it. I am salty, but I didn't get to go where I wanted to go. I want to go <laughs> up. You see, I want to go up in this little, like, vertical cavern, but I don't know how to do it. Yeah, uh, it looks like you probably just need to dash up left through the right block. Oh, right? So and so, yeah. Do you do you know that if you jump as you are leaving that block, you will get way more distance? No, really? I yeah. did not know that. Holy crap! Okay, holy <laughs> gracious. I just can't control my controller. The controller is controlling me. Oh, uh, we got a question from uh, Rustam. Rustam, what's the, what's the label to choose when you're uh, want to find out a good place to start contributing? We have a beginner's friendly label. Yeah, um, I think it's. Uh, I know on the components repo, it's like called good first issue or something like that. What is it? I don't oh, remember. Yeah, that's, what that's, that's the term. That's the term. Good first issue. I think we have that in our repo. Thank you for wanting to contribute, though. That's amazing. Yeah, come through. There's plenty of work. And plenty of yeah. work. The question here, how does router preloading work? And when should we change the default preloading strategy? Uh, I don't know a ton about this. I think the answer is always going to be, it depends on your application, right? Um, I think by default, it doesn't preload anything and it just waits until you go to navigate to a route to preload it. Um, I think there's an eager one that just kind of preloads everything. Um, I don't know what the other options are, but in general, stuff like this, you it's always going to depend on your application and what makes the most sense for the specific UI you're building. Oh, that was so close to my dreams coming true. I just figured out something that I didn't realize. You can choose your direction, like uh, your exit direction. When you dash into this thing, you don't have to like go, oh, whatever, I give up. I'm <laughs> moving on. I'm moving on with my life. <laughs> oh man, don't, don't let me play any more games. I'm over this. Give me some Horizon. You know what I did? I actually beat a, uh, a, a thunder jaw was no, taking no damage the other day. Not bad. Yeah, but I can't do this. How how far are you in Horizon? You know, not that far because I'm doing a ton of side quests. I'm only at like level twenty five or something. Okay. That's half. So, well, that's that's probably like a third of the way through the yeah, game. I haven't I haven't sought out any subordinate functions, for example. You know what yeah. I mean, like. I've yeah. just been going through the towns and fighting all the rebel camps because I'm just, I just like getting into fights. So I want to do some, some damage to, to some uh, in the games, see. in video games. Let me be clear. I like to get into fights into video games that are based on combat, not in real life. Let's see. Oh, apparently there's only two issues marked with good first issue. We should, uh, um, we should go tell. Uh, we should go tell the team to add more. <laughs> yeah, seriously. That's a really great point. <laughs> I'll go tell them in Slack after we finish streaming. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, I know in the, the Angular Components repo, we probably got some more good first issue tags. There's also a, there's also a help wanted issue. Uh, which is called that because that like GitHub gives that label special treatment. Um, but those are generally issues that are good, like 
good for community contribution and don't require a ton of additional like context or design. Uh, Mark, what do you want to play next month? Oh, I want you to play... Because we're going to... Next month, I think we're going to have our, our extra special guest. Yeah. We got to see what, they, what, what they're what going to be comfortable with. Because we could torture them with like a game like this. Or we could be like, oh, no, we're going to be nice and, you know, give them like a nice game to play. So they, they wanted to play Fortnite, but... I know, I, but no guns. Yeah, we're, we're going to avoid violence in this. That's our challenge. Oh, you know what? I have a good idea for one. <laughs> What's that? It's, um, I think it's called Patrick's Paradox. Oh, Patrick's Parabox. Um, go check out this game. It looks really cool. It is a puzzle game that uses recursion as part of its puzzle mechanic. Yeah, go watch this trailer for Patrick's Parabox. It looks really cool. Yeah, I, I might do that. I'll check it out. Patrick's Paradox. Parabox. Patrick's Parabox. Yeah, so I... Um... <laughs> Uh, so my son, uh, he's really into retro games, like really into them, right? Like Duck Hunt? And, no, like uh, like N64 games and NES games. So he wants to play like Mario, the hardest level, right? I mean, the lost levels. He likes those games. He's, he's my kid, so he likes the hard stuff. But the difference is he can't understand difficulty scaling yet, where some things are harder than others. Mm -hmm. so he gets super frustrated when he plays games and he has like meltdowns when he plays a hard game like he tried to play and he's only four so he's trying to play mario 64 for example it's mm -hmm. not a hard game but there is a challenge right and so he gets really upset why did i bring this up i was getting really frustrated with this game my hands started to sweat and i tell him Take a break. If you're really upset, just take a break. You don't have to get upset. It's just a game. So I removed the game from the stream because <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't having a good time. Yeah. Uh, you know, have you seen uh, have you seen the stuff about the new Kirby game that just came out on Switch? I saw it. I haven't played it yet. Apparently, it's gonna. It's great for kids, right? It's super really? super approachable for like even like four year olds. I might have to buy that. I might have to do that. I will say that does uh, diminish my own interest in it, <laughs> but <laughs> I've got I've got a huge enough backlog anyway. Got to get through Elden Ring, and then after that, I want to play Tunic. Still haven't done the Outer Wilds DLC. Mm. Uh, still, True. still need to play. I think it's the Forgotten City. Is that what it was called? Yeah, the Forgotten City. Um, Oh, and I'm right. I'm like halfway through Inscription. Got to finish Inscription. See, I'm, I got to finish Shantae's uh, Risky Revenge. I have like 60 games on Stadia that I have. Like I've never even started. Um, I didn't finish Immortals Phoenix Rising, which was a surprisingly good game. I feel like Zelda Breath of the Wild, where it's kind of that energy of if you can see it, you can go there. And if it's like as a surface, you can climb it. Mm -hmm. It has that type of energy, and it's surprisingly good. It is surprisingly good. Yeah. All right, we got we got some more Angular questions here. I ask them. Let's do it. Let's I'll start from the bottom. Let's see. It says, "Are you planning on supporting vanilla extract CSS?" I don't know what that's referring to. Um. Let's see, have we played Cyberpunk? I played Cyberpunk when it came out. Uh, you know, for all the flack it got, for all its flaws, I still enjoyed it. I, I, I saw I, I saw what they were going for, and, like, yeah, it had, you know, some rough edges, but there were some good parts, too. Well, but how about this? How about Stadia being, like, the best place to play it when it started? Mm-hmm. Like, that was a big win. Yeah, yeah, it really was. I saw, like... Polygon and other media outlets talking about like, yeah, you know, you can't get a PS5, you can't get a Xbox series, whatever it is now. What it like 
sidebar, uh, mm-hmm. Xbox naming. I just like you know. Um, okay. Let's see. What is the best way to factor out custom HTML slash CSS substrings in an ng4 template? Uh, I don't know exactly what you mean. If you had an example, right? Because normally, like, I think like, if you're talking about like factoring out, um, factoring out stuff from something you have an ng4 you just put it in a component mm. I don't know. Let's see yeah this game was coming in super hot I had to mute the mute the game stream because uh it's coming in super duper hot yeah Let's see, there's a question like, oh, like basically CSS and TS. Um, we don't really have any plans to actively work on anything in this space in the near future. Um, right now, Angular already has its styles participate in the JavaScript module system, which is ultimately the point of things like CSS and JS. Um, so is that you are creating this dependency edge between your JavaScript, your component, and its styles so that your build system and your dev server and all that stuff, your bundler can resolve those dependency edges and like better do module splitting or lazy loading or whatever. And in Angular land, your CSS already participates in the JavaScript module system because your CSS gets inlined into the JavaScript when we compile the component. Um, there, like, I don't know. There is the argument to be made for like looking at different authoring styles for that, but it's not really anything that's on our radar anytime soon. All right, what do you I wasn't even paying attention, Mark. Oh my gosh, the frame rate is like not even feelable, right? Oh, I wasn't even looking. So is it like one or two frames per second for you? Uh, it's it's maybe like 10 frames a second. Okay. Yeah, that's all right. Let's see. Uh, someone said, uh, they know Mark plays guitar. What about me? Uh, I own a guitar. It's over there next to Obama. <laughs> Uh, I can play, I can very slowly move between about five chords. <laughs> I have to look down this and take a good time. start. Um, I don't play start. any other, in, like, I don't really play any instruments. Um, uh, trying to set up a woodworking shop and learn, start a, try to start learning woodworking. So that's, that's a new hobby I hopefully don't abandon. Mm. Well, what's your goal? Like, what are you going to make? Like, what constitutes a success as is keeping it a hobby, I guess? Uh, I'd like to make furniture for the house. So, um, in particular, I want to make a pair of sideboards for the dining room uh, that okay. are designed for board game storage. What's a sideboard? A sideboard is... Uh, <laughs> it's a piece of furniture that it's... It's like a dresser, but not for clothes, but for other things. And you put it oh, in a okay. kitchen or a dining room. Got it. Sounds rad. Um, I want to make like a little like in, like a little table for the entryway of the house that has like cubbies where you can put like bags and like a little shoe rack at the bottom for shoes. Uh, I want to make some picture frames. Um, my my ultimate project that I think I would want to build up to is building like a package delivery drop a box for my front porch that's like yeah. locked and you know a delivery person can put in a code and it will like open and they can put packages in there and close it and it locks. But that's like that's a whole like it's woodworking plus you need to like bolt it to your porch and get like a 
I don't know, a Raspberry Pi or something to like handle putting in the code and locking and unlocking it. That's like a whole big project. Mm. Man, I had to mute this game, Jeremy, because the menu had some like music in it. I'm like, we're going to get like a DCMA takedown. Let's see. A uh, question here. Um, I saw investigating ES build is on the roadmap. Any insights on that? Uh, ES build is already used in Angular yep. CLI. It's already there. Mission accomplished. Um, is V being considered? I was actually asking, I asked Doug about this literally yesterday. Um, is like, uh, are we looking at uh, like V and Snowpack as possible like integrations? And the answer is like, Yes, but also no. Um, the The more general thing is we're looking at um, more native, like ECMAScript module support in the Angular CLI build system. Veet, I think, is more focused on being a dev server, and so that like it's related to the area of investigation there, but kind of a different thing. Um, and I think there's just more work to be done in looking at those things and figuring out how they might fit into the CLI. Um, Can you help the people understand what the difference would be uh, for V versus ES build? Like so there's, there's the two kind of two things here. One is the build system and um, or I guess three different things, right? There's the build system, there's the bundler and the dev server. So my understanding is V is mostly focused on being a dev server. Um, and whereas Webpack is more focused on being both like, well, primarily focused on being a bundler that incidentally has a build system and exposes a dev server. <laughs> and so there's, there's kind of this like weird di Venn diagram of like what Webpack does and what Vite does and what ES build does. And how various other tools like SAS and Lint and um, and Rollup all like fit into that. And so, uh, CLI team is always like looking at the you know the ecosystem and figuring out like what makes sense for us to do. Um, ultimately, like stability is the number one thing of like not messing up existing applications and having like a very smooth on ramp onto whatever changes we make. And so, uh, we're we're very conservative in how we approach like radical architectural changes in the composition of the CLI or the framework or components, uh, just generally, you know, we take our times and try not to, to break things. All right. I think that's it because we're right at time. I have a hard stop today at a uh, 1230 PST. Yeah. Um, I got another meeting right after this. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, I played some Celeste, some Celeste. My hands are tired from gripping this controller, trying to get it to do what I want or get my brain to do what I want the controller to do. One of those combinations of things. Five more minutes. We do not have five minutes. <laughs> 30 more seconds. Uh, all right. Well, thank you all for, for coming and watching us. Next month, we're going to have extra special secret guests that we'll reveal probably ahead of time, but um yeah. what else uh tweeted us what do you want us to play or if you want us to do something so specific on these streams and we'll see you next month yeah so so good thanks friends continue to be great we, we, we we're just so grateful you're here have a good month jeremy i will see you <laughs> soon yeah. so yeah but friends we'll see you all next month go build great apps